Alright, so this is going to be recording that and going over a little bit on how to set up a planetary interaction as well as going into how to set up a P2 to P4 setup. So planetary interaction is something that you're only able to do as an Omega character. So this is something that is locked to alpha accounts. But uh, just to cover a few of the skills quickly, if you go into planet management, it's on your far right hand side here, you'll see five skills. Um, the interplanetary consolidation is determines basically how many planets you can have. So you start with a base of one planet, and then for each level of the five, five levels, you get one more. So at maximum level, you can support six planets. Command center upgrades basically upgrades your CPU and power grid of your planet, which you'll see when I go build a planet, it determines how much you can build on a planet. So the higher level the skill is, the more you can build. Um, the planetology is what allows you to look for resources on a planet and just determines how accurate your scans are. I'll showcase this in a minute. Um, my scans will be very inaccurate because I don't have this skill. And advanced planetology um, increases the resolution even more. So it allows you to become even more accurate with your scanning. Um, the remote sensing is required for you to be able to actually look at a planet and see what the resources are on that planet. And um, the higher the skill is, the farther away you can be. So right now, at level one allows one light year, which hopefully will allow me to do that within the system. So there's a couple ways to look at it. One is you click on the system name and then the third tab over is orbital bodies. And this is nice because it shows you all the planets in the system as well as moons, but it also shows you um, what type of planet. So there are several types, but so in this system there are barren, um, oceanic, temperate, gas, gas, and I believe another barren at the end. So this is mainly uh, has barren planets. Each planet type has different resources, and some of the planets do share different resource types, um, but no two planets are the same. Um, the other thing too, when you click on a planet, you go to information. This will matter more when you are looking at a planet to do to do resource harvesting. Because what is the size of the planet? And you're going to look at the radius. So you can see on this um, barren planet, it's 2,150 kilometers, which is a good thing. The higher that gets on a planet, which we'll look at the gas plants, the harder it is because um, your stuff is going to be more spread out to get resources. So you'll see here the radius is 35,000. So if you're doing production, you generally want, or if you're doing um, harvesting, you generally want to try and have a smaller um, planet. So something like this, where it's 2,000 kilometers, is much easier to do. So if you look here, there's a planetary production. It'll tell you what type of resources you can extract. So noble metals, carbon compounds, microorganisms, aqueous liquids, and base metals. So what you can do is you can go to your Neocom menu and under your industry tab you'll see planetary production. If you click on that, it will have a list of all the planets that you have access to. So you can see currently I have one planet set up with 24 installations and I have the ability to add four more but none of them have been established yet. So the way you establish that, we'll go here, we're going to go to planet 2 and we're going to go to view planetary production and I'm going to be able to showcase some of these skills right now. Um, so the remote sensing, when you open the planetary produ um, production, you're going to have a build option and a scan option. So before you build, you're going to want to scan if you're doing resource gathering to tell you where things are. So this slider allows you to set maximum visible. So if you have it all the way top, it's visible here. And the lower you down, the lower down you have it, the more you'll be able to see. So in this case, we want it lower because in high sec, there's not a big density of resources. But you can see how this part, so right now I'm looking at aqueous liquids, so it's saying roughly this color matches here. So you can see there's nothing really here. There's more here, um, over here. And you can see where on the planet those resources are. So now if I click on base metals, that's going to change. And you can see where on the planet those base metals are at. And again, it's about this level of resources that are available. Carbon compounds, I can do that. You can see I have a couple of pockets that are a little bit higher here, and then kind of the yellowish color throughout. Then you go to microorganisms, and you can see I kind of have a band here and a band here. Um, and then you go to noble metals. You can see there's a couple of spots, but not much with noble metals. So something to keep in mind if you're doing extraction is high sec is your least amount of resources on a planet. Low sec is a little bit better 
millisecond wormholes are where you're going to find the best planets. And so obviously you'll, instead of these being like this, you'll see numbers up in this range when you get into millisec and wormhole, depending on what it is. Now every planet is different, so you want to really look at planets based on what you're trying to build and what resources you want to harvest, because um, obviously if you're trying to do noble metals, this is not a good planet for that. Um, this planet's best is the base metals, is the best thing that you could find off this planet. And the reason these colors matter, so remember we talked about the skills, the planetology and advanced planetology, skilling these up, this is not very accurate. This just gives a rough idea, but these don't, these aren't necessarily true. It could be over here, it could be over here, we don't actually know. So if you skill up your planetology and advanced planetology, these will become more accurate and you'll actually be able to tell exactly where your resources are. So that's just something to keep in mind if you do want to do that. I'm going to be showcasing a production planet, so for me, these skills don't actually matter. So you'll see I already set up the first planet, but I'm going to showcase how we do that on the second planet. Now the most important thing is you have to have a command center for the planet type. So in my case I'm doing barren command centers. These are 1003 per. So in this case I have four planets I'm going to be setting up. So I have this in a hauler. But you need something with at least 1000 M3 in the ship because you have to be undocked in space. So you can see in my case I'm actually on a citadel which just allows me to be safe-ish while I'm doing this. Another good way to do this if you're in Nullsec or Wormhole space is warp to a safe with a cloak and just cloak your ship because you can do this while cloaked. So you can just warp to a safe in the middle of the system, cloak your ship up, and you can do all your work, and then you can warp back. The only thing you have to be undocked for is um, putting down the command station, and then also if you're transferring um, materials into a planet from a customs office, you do need to be in space to do that. So in this case, we want to do on planet two, so we're going to go to planet two, we're going to view planetary production, can close all this out, I'm going to go to build, build command center. Now, if you're doing a resource gathering, you're going to want to pay attention to where you put your command center based on what resources you're trying to get. In my case, it doesn't matter because I'm not trying to do resources, so I can go wherever I want on the planet. So we're going to just stick it right there. Now, with this, uh, you remember we talked about the upgrades. You'll look here, and you'll see this is a level 1 upgrade, and this is my power output, that's my CPU output. The level 2, it's more, level 3, 4, 5. So you can see I gain 11,000 um, MW power output and 19,640 teraflops, I think, of CPU output if I upgrade. Now you can see the cost here of 4,200,000, 4, so I'm going to go ahead and do that upgrade which is going to allow me to build my things. Go ahead and click Submit. You always have to click Submit, otherwise it won't actually do anything. Um, the Extractor Control Units, these are built to actually harvest resources. Um, I'm not going to go over into those because this planet is not going to do this. Basic Industry Facilities allow you to um, do your Tier 1. So once you harvest a resource, you can put it in a basic factory and turn it into Tier 1 planetary commodities. Again, this setup we're doing is a tier 2 to tier 4, um, so we don't need anything from the tier 1. So we're going to use the advanced, high-tech, uh, storage facility, and launch pad. All those are going to be used. Now, the high-tech production plants, those are only available on certain planets. I know for sure they're available on temperate and barren. There might be one other planet or two that can use them, but mm, I would say probably about half at least, maybe more of the planets cannot build high-tech production plants. So if you're doing tier 4 production, you need to pay attention to make sure you have a planet that will support high-tech production. Um, so we're going to start with doing um, the advanced. This allows you to do tier 2 and tier 3 production. In our case, we're only going to do the tier 2 production. So we're going to start here. I'll explain this. Try to explain this. So the launch pad, what that allows you to do is actually launch your materials to a customs office. So you actually have the ability, if you go through your command center, to launch it into space and it puts a, um, a little um, container in space, but you'll notice that the command center can only hold 503. So this is a very small size, whereas your custom offices hold, I believe, 35,000, and the storage pad holds 10,003. So you could do 10,000 at a time versus 500. So obviously, if you're doing a high quantity, you don't want to be trying to do that through command center. And as a general rule, command center launches are also more expensive than doing it a through a launch pad. So I'm going to have two of those set up. Now I'm going to finish surrounding these with advanced factories. Um, and in this case we need eight advanced factories um, on each side of this to support our 
our P4 production. And so I'm gonna, the reason I have these so close together is that as you link factories together, which you'll see in a minute, that uses power and um, CPU. And the closer things are together, the less power and CPU you have to do. Okay, so I've got my eight there. Then we're going to take our storage facility. This is used actually more as a holding tank than anything else. But the nice thing about this is it allows you to hold 12,000. So if you need to store things, you want a storage facility because that allows you to hold a lot more. And then we're going to do four tiny four production plants. Okay, so we have all of our plants. You'll see here right now, none of these are linked together, so they can't actually do anything. So there's two ways. The easiest way to do create links is just click create link over here on the left, and then you can just click on the things that you want to link together. So you start it from, click the first one to start the link, click the second one to end the link. And that's the nice thing about doing this is you can just click now. Again, you don't want to do these all over the place. You want to pay attention to where they go because this is what all your resources flow through. And so if you have too many links going too many directions, it can mess with your resources a little bit. Again, on this type of a planet, that's not as much of an issue, but on other planets, you will actually see that become a problem. Now, I'm gonna click Submit because I don't want all this work I just did to, cause, to disappear, so click Submit to make sure all of your work goes through. You'll see the charge for all the factories and things I built was eight million. Okay, now we actually wanna tell them what to do. So on our high-tech production plants, we have to decide what are we gonna tell this to build. So you can see all of your tier four, so you can see on this case, two tier. So this one requires three tier threes. This one requires three tier threes. This one requires two tier threes and a tier one. This one requires two tier threes and a tier one. Two tier, three tier threes. Three tier threes. Two, three, two tier threes and a tier one. And three tier threes. Now in this case, what we're doing, we're going to focus on the um, two tier threes and a tier one because we can do all that on one planet which makes it a lot easier so we're going to do an organic mortar applicators we're going to click install and then it will give me an option to route that the reason you want to route the commodities is if you do not route them they will disappear and so basically you just lose all of the work that you did if you do not route the commodities so we're going to route those to the spaceport so basically once they're done they're ready for launch and you can see that turn yellow from red it means there's actually something and then just auto populates what I just last had. We're going to do that. So we are splitting these. Basically, two halves are going to be working from two separate spaceports. And so we're going to route the left ones to the left spaceport and the right ones to the right spaceport. Now that now, if I look here, it'll tell me I need tier one is bacteria. I need tier three. I need condensates and robotics. So this side is going to be our condensates. This side is going to be our robotics. It really doesn't matter which is which, but in our case. Um, we're going to do it that way just because it's simpler and when I have multiple planets it's easy to just put materials and check things if things go wrong. So in this you'll notice the tier 2 starts at the top and then it goes into your tier 3s. Now we want robotics which is a tier 3 so we have to scroll all the way down here to find it but once we find it we can click on that, click install and that first planet has installed. Now what I did not do which is a problem is I didn't route it. So it's asking where we want it routed. We're going to route our tier 3s over here to the storage facility and so we're going to click create route and go to the next one and it auto populates click install click the storage facility create route and we're going to just work this all the way around so the biggest thing with this is you can um, look into doing this um, i have this running on three characters and it makes probably if i do it 75% of the month. The nice thing is it takes once you're all set up, um, moving stuff into the plants to start it and off takes about 45 minutes every couple days. And this allows you to make, um, if you're doing this constantly, I would say between three to four billion dollars a month in passive, semi-passive income. It's not completely passive, but it's semi-passive. Okay, so we needed condensates was the other thing that we need, so we're going to find condensates on our list here. You can also just type in the first few letters if you want to. It's another way that you can do it to find it, and we're just going to route all those over here to the center. And the reason I do this, I, you can do this in NullSec where you have lower tax rates. The tax rates on the um, custom offices generally in HiSec run between 15 and 20%. Um, I have found that over 20% it's not profitable, 
but in this system where I'm at, the tax rates are about 16%. And so that makes it still profitable. In this case, um, being one jump out from JITA, it makes it very easy. I don't have to pay hauling fees. I don't have to pay costs of transporting materials out to NOLSEC. And um, it's very easy to get the materials back to market. So in my stance, that actually just makes life a lot easier. Okay, so all my tier two is now going here. You'll see all these have red things flashing saying there's no input materials. And so it's basically saying it needs something to help it run. So what we're gonna do is first we'll start with the P4 and we're gonna go up here and it's telling us it needs condensates, bacteria, and robotics. Well, we already routed robotics and condensates to the storage facility. So if we click here and we click on this um, three arrows, that's our routes. And we'll see here's these routes of condensates and robotics. So we'll start with condensates. We're gonna click create a route and send that to here. Click create route, and we're just gonna do that all the way across. Okay, nope, and click here, click create route, there we go. And click on that, and just all the way across. And so what this will do is it will tell, once the P3s get into the storage facility, they will be requested by the tier four factory, and they'll be built up to P4. Okay, so we do all the condensates, and we'll do the robotics now. Click, just click create route. This portion is, now be careful, because once I start creating, you'll see I have an outgoing route for robotics, so you wanna be careful, you don't delete that. Click on the incoming, and then click the create route. And make sure you don't double up when you create routes, because it will actually cause it to error out. And if you do end up doubling up, if you know which facility you did it on, you just have to delete the route, and then recreate it, and it'll be fine. Okay, did all that, I'm gonna go and click submit, because it's gonna get a little bit more crazy in just a minute. Okay, so now if I click here, you'll see these two are green and this one, or I think that's green, I can't really tell. This one's red. So it's saying, I know I'm getting, I know where I get the condensates, I know where I get the robotics, I don't know where I get the bacteria. And on these ones, they don't know where they're getting anything. So now what we're going to do, I already put the um, materials that we need up here in the customs office. Now, basically, this side is only going to need the materials for condensates. This side's only gonna need the materials for robotics. What I found by experience is to save time is if I route the materials from this um, spaceport to this side and to this side and vice versa, then it doesn't matter which spaceport my materials get dropped in. And I have noticed that, and sometimes when I open the customs office, it opens to going to one launch pad, sometimes it opens to going to the other one. And it can get really confusing as to which one it's going to. And I kept running into problems where materials got on the wrong side and it, did, it didn't know where to look for them. So what I decided to start doing was basically just route everything from both ones so it doesn't matter. So it just it's much quicker for me when I go to put materials in. I can put it from either side. So first side, we're going to do the condensates. So we're going to start because this is primarily they're going to come from this side. But we're for now, we're going to start them from over here. So we're going to start with bacteria. And then we're going to start with 80. And then we're going to take 80 oxides. And where I got that from is if you just click here, it tells you you need oxides and coolant. Are the things that you need, 10 units of each. And times 8 of these, so that's where I get 80. Okay, so we have oxides, we need 80 coolant. Okay, and then I'm going to transfer those. So basically I'm taking them from, so right now you see 35,000 is what the customs office can hold. I have all these materials in the customs office. I'm going to transfer these down to the planet into this one here. So you'll see those pop in right there. And now they're in the customs office. And now if I click on the customs office, it'll show me our materials. So the bacteria are going to go to the P4. So I'm just going to factory right there. Click on storage. And that again takes you back here. So if you, you can either click and click create route, or you can just double click, which is much faster. Click on the one you want and click again and then it creates that route. So you'll see these are green now because it now knows where it's getting everything. So that's a good thing. So click back here, we're gonna to go to storage. So we're gonna do coolant first, we're gonna double click, and we're double click there, and go back here, and we're just gonna work our way around the circle. And so what we're basically doing is we're telling the coolant to go from that launch pad to each of these factories. And you'll notice that each time I get 10 less, that's because currently those factories are empty, so it's actually immediately saying, oh, well, I'll take that those coolants and I will put them in that factory. And you'll see as I now do with the oxides, I'm just working my way around just like I did. And you'll see this is why the double clicking is much nicer because if I was 
trying to click create route every time this would go much slower than just double clicking and double clicking this is a new fix that CCP made, which was very nice. Okay, so you can see all of these factories are now running properly. So we're going to go ahead and click Submit. Great. So now these factories know how to get their materials from this spaceport. But now what I want to do is I want to tell them how to get it from this spaceport. But before I do that, I'm going to set up these factories over here. So these factories are going to need mechanical parts and consumer electronics. So we're going to go to this one. We're going to click on the Launch button, which will open the customs office from this spaceport and we're going to get our mechanical parts we're going to do the same thing 80 and we're going to do consumer electronics we're going to do 80 and bacteria we're going to do 80 as well because we're going to do it to the p4s on this side transfer those down now i have the materials here i can click here and open that to the bacteria first and so the bacteria takes 40 so it's 40 for each one and what this does is now these can pull from either side. The bacteria will always be transferred to one of these. It doesn't really matter where, but the P4s will always pull from there. All right, so we're going to take consumer electronics, send them over here. And again, work our way around. The nice part is this is the time-consuming part. Once you do this, you don't have to do this part again unless you move planets. Um, so the maintenance portion is really simple because you just have to drop materials in the customs office, put them on the planet, and it starts going, and you pick up the old stuff. So this is just, the setup is slightly annoying and a little bit time consuming. Almost all the way around. So this could be all that you do, but so at this point, the planet is fully functional has materials and it knows how to pull them but the problem is is it only knows how to pull from one each side knows how to pull from one launch pad so what i'm going to do now is i'm going to tell it how to pull from both so i'm going to repeat the same thing i did but on the opposite side so i'm going to take the last of my oxides the last of my coolant and i'm going to take the same amount 2360 of my um, bacteria i'm going to transfer those down into this launch pad now this is going to be the primary launch pad for those materials that I want them to go to, but again, it doesn't matter, but I'm gonna to go to storage. Bacteria is already fine, I don't need to do anything that with, but with coolant. Now I need to tell it to go from this launch pad to this side. So double click my coolant and click it there. And then notice again, my coolant is going down because it's currently processing 10, so it can hold another 10 as it's preparing for the next round. So that's why it's allowing me to do 10 again. If I had not submitted and started the production process, it would not be taking 10 out. But that's nice because then I can just look to make sure that there's an 80 unit difference. So if I look here, I started at 2360, I'm down to 2280, that's 80 units difference. I know I didn't miss any, perfect. So now I'm gonna do the oxides. Just work my way around. Perfect. And I'm going to go ahead and submit that. Now this side is completely set up. And so now I'm going to work my way over to the other launch center. Go to here. And now I can just bring everything in because all the remaining materials go to go in. And just drag those down. And then what I'm going to do is open this up. And so my consumer electronics. And just work my way around the circle. Again, it's going down by 10 each time. So the numbers, um, the, way, the reason this is set up the way it is, as far as the numbers, is to allow it to run for kind of the maximum amount of time it can by itself, but still allow you to fit everything into the um, launch pads. Because the launch pads do have a specific capacity that they can handle. And so if you try to put too much stuff in, you'll have to leave it in the customs office and you wouldn't be able to run it anyways. And so the setup that is here, basically allows you to run as much as possible um, but still not have to come back and mess with things in between. You can basically just start it and then go and then I will show that after I finish this what the starting numbers are based on um, what I'm doing with two tier threes and a tier f uh, and a tier one. Okay so all these are 2280 so I'm going to go and click submit. So at this point this planet is completely set. So what I can do is I can just bring a hauler in and I can 
Warp 2, Planet 2, I can go to the Customs Office, I can click Access Customs Office, I can just drop my materials in here, and then I can just pull half them into one and half into the other. So let me go to Planet 3, because um, I actually have, or actually Planet 1, because I have the materials here in the Customs Office. So the numbers go, basically, of each of your Tier 2 materials, you want 2,440. So you should have that times 4, so 2440 times 4, 1, 2, 3, 4. And then you want double that amount of your Tier 1. And the reason being is the Tier 1s go on each side, so think of it as each spaceport has Tier 1s, so 2440 go on one side, 2440 go on the other side. Two of these, so consumer electronics and mechanical parts, make up your robotics. Those go on one side. Oxides and coolants go on the other side. So 2440 of each of those, and those will all mix together to make your Tier 4s. So those are just the numbers. So it's 2440 of each um, Tier 2 per planet times 4, and then 4880 of your Tier 1 per planet. Um, and so you can multiply that out based on how many planets you're going to do. So hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of how the P2 to P4 setup goes, as well as a little bit on the basics of uh, using planetary interaction. I'd love to answer any questions if you have them. Thanks so much for watching.